All right, this is our Missouri Orthopedic Institute segment here on The Closures, and we welcome in Dr. Jose Ramirez with us, uh, and uh, he's over with Missouri Orthopedic Institute. Appreciate him taking some time with us. Uh, chiropractic, uh, adjustments, acupuncture, dry needling, and that's not just, we're not teasing you on dry needling, uh, soft tissue and, and other therapies as well for Dr. Ramirez. That is his ballywhack, and uh, welcome aboard and welcome back. Thanks for taking the time. I re- really do appreciate it. Well, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you had a uh, you, we were talking off air before before we went through everything else here, but the, that you had a really busy day. Does it ever slow down for you, even if if there are no athletes? It does. Uh, here in the clinic, it slows down. You know, really around the holidays, like last week, July Fourth, was a little bit slower. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll slow down right after Memorial Day weekend, then start picking back up. But the, the craziest part will be once everybody you know here starting to creep up towards the fall everybody's hit their deductibles <laughs> we start seeing a lot more people <laughs> Does it, it, I mean, athletics I, wise it's starting to it's going to get here in another week and a half it's my life is going to be over because football is going to start and then that's every weekend until december mm-hmm. all week every weekend until december yeah yeah and i mean i laughed at it but that's that is accurate as far as people hitting their deductible and deciding all right i need to get this kind of taken care of uh for you on chiropractic, and, and I know we want to talk a lot about the acupuncture end of things here today as well, but how what's the acceptance been now as far as that getting greater and greater acceptance, both chiropractic and acupuncture care? It is. Uh, chiropractic it has been getting more acceptance really over the last 15, 20 years. Mm-hmm. In, in regards to here in the MOI, it's been great that we've been here two years and really uh, as word has really gotten out to all the primary care practitioners and all the other specialists in the system. It's really begun. We're starting to see now uh, a lot more referrals, a lot more people using it. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's a matter of, hey, I don't know, you know, there's nothing else is working. Let's just try those crazy chiropractors, right? <laughs> uh, but, I've never said but, that. You know, what's, and I mean, that's the truth. And, yeah. and you yeah. know what? And, and we do really well with those cases. When you've tried everything else, and it's not a surgical case, right? And you tried everything else, you come see us, we usually have pretty good success with that, right? Acupuncture, uh, it's starting to come on. It's not as accepted or it's not as used as chiropractic is, at least here in this building. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's it's really, you know, we really don't, I, I, I don't use it as a primary uh, treatment. I use it more to help my chiropractic treatments. I use it more for musculoskeletal and, and joint swelling and stuff like that. Uh, traditionally, traditional Chinese medicine will treat just about anything under the sun, right? Mm-hmm. So it, uh, it, a uh, traditional acupuncturist will treat uh, emotional, spiritual, physical, uh, organic issues, GI tract stuff, hormone imbalances. Uh, they treat all that with with traditional Chinese medicine. Traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, work some of the philosophy that all these diseases like diabetes and and, and other things like that are a cause of uh, energy imbalance in your body or energy deficiency. That en- energy, everybody's heard of chi, right? Mm-hmm. It's a Bruce Lee, right? Right. So, uh, Boy, so- that was a musty one there, Dr. Ramirez. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm a, I'm a fan, you know? so I'm a, I'm a fan of, of, of that genre. So, yep. you know, so the traditional Chinese uh, medicine practitioner will move chi or enable the flow of chi from a place where it's in excess to a place where it is in deficiency, mm-hmm. and that's how they get their patients better. And Dr. Jose Ramirez, right? I, with- I, I, I'm sorry. I was just going to reintroduce you here uh, on the closures and oh. uh, it, this part of our monthly or, monthly or, uh, Missouri orthopedic segment. Uh, you, and I wanted to talk more about the acupuncture aspect of things because, it, as you mentioned in, in your practice anyway, it's not a primary, but is it is an adjunct to chiropractic care. So, where do you see where is that used mostly? Is it something that when somebody comes in with lower back pain or shoulder or neck, or where do you find yourself using that the most? I find that I use it most around uh, the neck to treat headaches and jaw pain and, and obviously neck pain and shoulder pain, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, there's that old saying, uh, and musculoskeletal practitioners say to each other, the most commonly misdiagnosed shoulder problem is a bad neck, right? 
so when I have a shoulder issue that I'm treating that's not obviously not surgical because I don't treat things that are surgical, uh, uh, shoulder, someone's had shoulder problems because they're trying to golf or they're trying to garden and the shoulder flared up, I check the neck. And it's not always something that needs to be adjusted in the neck, but oftentimes there's tight tissue, uh, there's a decreased range of motion because of tight muscles or connective tissue, and that responds really well to my dry kneeling slash acupuncture. What about like pinched nerves? I mean, you 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 hear people go, ah, you know, they they said I got a pinched nerve and I got to keep exercising my neck and I got to work that around and then eventually the pressure will get relieved. Uh, you know, that's that's on that aspect of things. But how is something like that treated by you? Okay, so a pinched nerve can refer to, to actually refer to a couple of things, right? Mm-hmm. So it yeah. it, it could be a a disc that's really inflamed that's actually literally pinching the nerve. Uh, the, the dry kneeling that I do can help with some of the symptoms of that and the muscle guarding and the pain that comes from that. But I don't go, you know, I don't use an ultrasound or, or a horoscopy to go in there and actually see where I'm going and hit the, I don't hit the nerve and I don't hit the, the, the disc. Right. Mm-hmm. But I can treat a lot of, a lot of the discomfort that you have because of a herniated disc. I can help you with that. Right. And then I would refer you to other doctors that give you, uh, treatments that directly affect that that herniated disc. Uh, it can also be just from tight muscles. Like I, I get a lot of people who come in, hey, I got a pinched nerve, I'm having tingling and numbness in my hands, that, that classic thoracic outlet syndrome, Yeah. right? Uh, that's, a, that's a peripheral issue, right? So meaning it's not pinched or it's not uh, irritated in the spinal canal, it's outside of it. So like your pec muscles, mm-hmm. your neck muscles on, on your side or on your front, uh, your biceps or even just a lot of people, their forearms are so tight and so knotted up that if I treat that with some needles, a lot of that stuff goes away. And they were thinking it was a pinched nerve in their neck. And it ended up not being. Uh, I also want to make sure that we bring this up here. we got the Sports Physical Day coming up here next week, uh, one week from today, July 18th, from 530 to 830 at the MOI. Uh, it is appointment-based, so make sure you give them a call at 884-5122. On the sports side of things, you, you mentioned thoracic outlet syndrome, and, and that, that has come up a couple of different times with pitchers who've had the surgery to relieve that, and then their career never seems to ever be the same again. For you, as, as you work your way through this, especially like thoracic outlet syndrome and, and, and that, is that, is your care maybe a prime a, a a first step as opposed to surgical care which could be then considered a last step yeah, it can be it'd be one of the things I would suggest you try first okay right yeah and I, and I think uh, if the surgeon is aware of how dry kneeling can help because sometimes they don't know what they don't know right mm-hmm. a good surgeon is going to recommend you do everything else under the sun before they perform their surgery right yeah uh, and, and that's all our surgeons here in this building all want to make sure that you've tried every other avenue before before they, they perform surgery on you. It certainly can help. In my experience in here, we, I've, I've, we've done it on both ends. We've, we've helped overhead athletes, not just pitchers, but anybody that's overhead, neck plus swimmers, uh, javelin throwers. You know, anybody who uses overhead movement a lot is susceptible to this TOS-type symptom or syndrome, and we've been successful – with all the other therapies, adding dry needling into it to relax all the tissues around the shoulder, the tissues around your lat and your rib cage to tighten up around your torso, all that can affect that shoulder joint, get it too tight, get that arm that you used to throw too tight to create that. And then we've also treated at overhead athletes that have had the surgery, right? They got a little bit of relief, but then it came back, right? So the surgery is uh, a common surgery is to remove that first rib, right? Yeah. So they've had it. They've had it resected, removed, and, and it comes back. The symptoms come back. So now we we did do the dry needling, and it helps them. Uh, if the, if it doesn't get rid of it completely, it, it always has helped to reduce the symptoms so they can perform at a high level. All right, Dr. Jose Ramirez here with us on the closure. All right, so the acupuncture, you know, and you talked about it, dry needling is another another phrase for it, but what's what's the process of acupuncture? What what do you go through, the explanation with the patient, and then a session? Okay, so patient will come in with a complaint. We'll, we'll review the history of the complaint, and then I'll, I'll tell them whether or not they're a candidate for, for acupuncture. Once we determine they are, 
Um, I'll explain to them, to, you know, uh, let's just say Mr. Smith, uh, I'm going to use uh, these thin acupuncture needles to pierce the skin and stimulate acupuncture points that we know are along your body. Right? These points will stimulate um, nerve receptors in your body, and they will initiate your body's neurohormonal system, right, which does a couple of things. Right? The needle itself creates microtrauma in there, which brings uh, blood flow to the area, to say like a tight muscle or an inflamed joint, and that's a healing process, right? Any controlled inflammatory process that brings blood to an injured tissue is going to heal it. Uh, and then your neurohormonal neuro system, once it kicks in, it releases your body's own natural hormonal painkillers and anti-inflammatory hormones and, and activators. And that's how really it, it really helps with a lot of stuff that I see here uh, in terms of back pain, uh, radicular pain, uh, any other nerve pain, inflamed shoulders, arthritic processes that hurt. I can't reverse their arthritis, but I can mm -hmm. certainly have you moving better after a session. So, so you, you roll out with this uh, this lovely sleeve of, of needles. Uh, who's who's more terrified of of you walking up with a fistful of needles, the regular patient or the the athlete? My football players are <laughs> terrified of. <laughs> they are terrified. I mean, heaven forbid, an opposing SEC team shows up with a handful of needles, and each player we're going to get rolled. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. They're tough kids, but you show them a needle and they get a little nervous. Okay. You have to walk them through the process mm -hmm. and, and explain it to them. Then they're fine. Once they have one treatment, they're fine. But that initial one, they're pretty terrified of. So, so do you just wait for them to pass out from fear and then go on with the acupuncture procedure? No, we don't want them passing out. Okay. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a couple of athletes uh, pass out from it, and, and then we just don't go back to it again. Yeah. That, that is not a good scenario. Yeah. But no. But I do, I do let them sweat a little bit, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But if I see they're going to start passing out, I, I, I shut it down. Okay, so so you bring out the javelin size needle first, and and see what the reaction is, and then you go just go with the regular set. Depends on how much I like the kid. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Doctor Jose Ramirez here on the club. <laughs> All right, let that be a lesson to all of you football players. Treat your chiropractic specialist nicely. Because right. they they have ways of getting back at you that you know you may not appreciate. You know I don't I don't have a problem with my football guys here. They they are, uh, you know, within our framework or where I work, we have a great group of kids. Mm -hmm. Our athletes here are all very courteous and very grateful for what we do. They're all great kids. They really are. Yeah, the first process to being ready to play football, and that's coming up here pretty quickly, folks, is uh, Sports Physical Day, July 18th, 530 to 830, Missouri Orthopedic Institute. Uh, you need to call ahead for an appointment at 884-5122. There'll be a health fair as well. And if you're interested, and this is actually not a, a bad idea at all, is uh, pre-concussion screening. So that's that's actually mm -hmm. a, a baseline concussion screening. That's, that's pretty good. How much do you deal with something like that? I mean, I, I know people don't think, hey, chiropractic, he's not going to deal with a concussion, but it, it, it does involve the, the head and neck area. It sure does, and usually it, it, it involves trauma to the neck, right, either mm -hmm. hyperflexion with rotation or, or extension with rotation. So I treat the, the, the symptoms that come from that, not necessarily the, the dizzy head okay. or stuff like that, but like the stiffness of the neck, uh, uh, the trauma to the neck, that's where we come in. And ah. the jaw, too, the TMJ. Oh, yeah. That kind of collision, uh, it, it can, you know, if you don't treat it down the road, even after everything, they're back to play, they can still get headaches because of, it's driven by TMJ. All right, Dr. Jose Ramirez, you can check him out over at the Missouri Orthopedic Institute. And, uh, again, uh, also the, the sports clinic that's going to come up here, the sports physical clinic, on July 18th from 530 to 830 at the Missouri Orthopedic Institute. Again, by appointment, uh, 884-5122. Doc, thanks for the time. I appreciate it. I hope uh, I hope you have a, a moment to take a, a little breather as, as this week and this month go along toward, uh, toward football season. I hope so, too. It'll be, it'll be good. But you know what? It's... It... It's hectic, but I love football season. It's the best time of the year. Yep, it certainly, certainly is. Appreciate your time today, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, hope to talk to you soon. All righty, looking forward to it. And maybe next time we can get him, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we get him into the studio. Dr. Jose Ramirez, Missouri Orthopedic Institute. Again, uh, the Sports Physical Day. It is free of charge. That's key. 530 to 830 next Thursday, July 18th. At the Missouri Orthopedic Institute, 884-5122. It'll also include uh, in there as well 
Uh, there are going to be baseline concussion tests are available by request, and there will be a health fair uh, in conjunction with that event. So thanks to Dr. Ramirez for joining us here today for our monthly Missouri Orthopedic Institute segment. The Closers on News Talk 1240 KLIK and News Talk 1400 KFRU.